you might have used this thing. It is called LCD which is short for liquid crystal display. They were extremely popular in the 1900s and were used in many computers back then. When technology enhanced, they were also used in TVs and display monitors. It is an extremely successful invention and is used till date mostly for hobby purposes. This one is the most commonly used type, the 16x2 character LCD. You might have used it for displaying data and you might have found it easy to use with the Arduino thanks to the LCD library the Arduino IDE provides. But have you ever thought how those things work and if you can use it without a library or without any microcontroller at all? To answer these questions, we will need to take a look on how it works. So that's what we will do today. Learn about it, use it without a microcontroller, after which you will be able to use it with any microcontroller without the need of any library. Let's start. Firstly, 16 by 2 means you will have two rows and on each row you will have 16 blank space which you can fill with any character to display. Now if you look closely at each character space, you will see a number of squares. Those are pixels and when they light up in different patterns, you will see your desired character. This particular LCD has a space made up of 5 by 7 dots or pixels. So the picture is clear. To print something on LCD, all you have to do is light up the pixels in a pattern that looks somewhat like what you want to display. But controlling this much number of pixels will not be an easy task. That's why we have these controllers on the back of this LCD or better called LCD module. The controller controls each and every pixel in the LCD. It knows exactly which pixel to light up to display any character, say capital A, small a, any numbers or anything at all. You just have to tell it what you want to display. And that's where these pins come in. You provide signals to these pins and the controller interprets it, understands what you like to display and then controls the pixels to display character as per your command. Let's take a closer look at the pins. First and second pin are for the power supply of the controller and third is the contrast adjust for the pixels. Most LCDs also have pins 15 and 16 and some don't. They are the supply for the backlight of the LCD whose purpose is to make reading characters on the display a little easier. If you are really curious, this will happen if you don't have pins 15 and 16 or if you don't supply power to these pins. Now the real deal starts. Pin number 7 to 14 are for data pins. You apply 8-bit ASCII codes to these pins of the characters you want to display. But there is a twist to it. You remember that you can do plenty of things using the LCD library rather than just printing characters like send the cursor to start, clearing the display, scrolling the display, etc. That kind of thing is done using the same data pin as well but with a change. The change will be in the pin number 4. It is called register select pin. The LCD has two very important registers, data and instruction. When this pin is held low, the data on the pins will be treated as instruction. Whereas if this pin is high, Data will be treated as ASCII codes and characters will be printed on a display accordingly. There are 8-bit codes for different instructions as well and I'll show you how it works later in the video. The pin 5 is read-write pin. When you want to write data to the LCD, you connect it to ground. And if you want to read from it, you connect it to VCC. Last pin is the enable pin. Once you have told the controller that you want to perform say and say function, you send a high to low pulse on this pin indicating the controller that it can perform whatever you just asked. It is like the latch pin of a shift register. Before that high to low pulse, controller will do nothing. Whatever data you provide just sits on the pins. Ok, enough theory. Now we will design a circuit which will help us understand its working by doing some practical. So firstly, we will need 8 SPGT switches that can connect the 8 data pins to ground or VCC and one extra switch to connect the register select pin to ground or VCC as well. Next, we will need a switch to provide a high to low pulse to enable pin to display the data. So a push button will be great for that. But to avoid bounce problem, we will need to add a capacitor with it. I also added two shift registers so that I can control the LCD using only three microcontroller pins but developing the software will take some time. I will upload the video if I do that in future. After schematic is complete, I converted it to PCB. I planned the layout in such a way that you have both manual control and shift register control on the same board, but you can decide what you want to use right now. 
for that I added jumpers to provide VCC and ground to either the manual part or the shift register part. After complete planning and finalizing the PCB, I downloaded its Gerber and uploaded it to jlcpcb.com and ordered it at just $2 which I received in 7 days. JLCPCB is the largest manufacturer of PCBs in China and has been in this field for more than 10 years, getting at least 8000 orders per day. PCBs are tested through automated optical inspection before delivering it to the customer. And if you have any doubt or issue, just contact their customer support. They are really responsive and very helpful. Now that I have the PCBs, I gathered the components and started soldering. And as always, a little mistake is a must. When you press the push button, the legs with the smaller distance get short and the legs with larger distance are always shorted by default. Now in the board, I accidentally made the connections assuming the legs with longer distance to be legs with shorter distance, which is not good. So to fix it, I will chop off the leg of the button so that it has no contact with the PCB and then short the opposite parts of the PCB. Keeping these things in mind, I completed the soldering. When you want to control it with switches, short the headers to SW side and if you want to control it using shift registers, short it to SR side. For now, we will control it using switches so I shorted the headers to SW side. I attached the LCD and powered the board with 5 volts. A working LCD should look like this when it is powered up. But it is not ready to use just now. You will first have to initialize it. Meaning, you will have to tell the controller what kind of display is it that you are using and in what mode you want to use it, the 8-bit mode or the 4-bit mode. In Arduino IDE, we do that by sending this begin function which sends an instruction to the LCD. So we will do just that. Different LCD types have different instructions. For the one we are using, it is 38H. So I set the register to low, fed 38H to the data pins and press the enable pins and it works. Now I will use this instruction to see where I am and after that we are ready to type. But I will move the cursor to the right before starting so that what I type is in the center. After that I set the RS pin to high and started feeding the ASCII codes of the characters I want to type, followed by pressing the enable pin. If you made a mistake you can always go back using shift left instruction and retype whatever you made wrong. Now after typing, you can see it's still not in the center of the display. For that, we can use shift entire display to the right instruction. Now it is in the complete center of the display. You can always do this on a breadboard, but it will not be that convenient. Using 8 or 9 switches is also not possible on a single breadboard. As you can see, I tried typing something but couldn't succeed. But if you have enough patience, you can surely do it. That will be all for this video. I hope you learned about the LCD and you can now use it without any library. If you are an electronics hobbyist, my suggestion would be to definitely use a library for time being but before that, learn how they work before there were things like Arduino. Then only you can grow your knowledge. There are many things to start, like the WS2812 to be LED, I2C communication, a keyboard, etc. If you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching. Till next time.